In the entirety of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series, different themes are present in every part. Some span the entirety of the series, like the theme of fate and destiny, or good versus evil. One such theme that seems to resonate between different arcs in the series is that people aren't always what they first perceived as, showing a level of distrust for the duration of the series. An individual could be backed what may otherwise be considered a reasonable goal or motive, yet be pretentious, volatile, and entirely evil in their actions and executions to attain said goal. This overarching theme in Jojo is rather consistent when Jojo antagonists are involved. So, let's talk about it. Of course, starting with Dio, who might be the only exception of this theme, as he's pure evil from the start. However, he plays a facade of sorts for his piercing phantom blood. Of course, he later breaks this when he rejects his humanity, which in part resonates with his theme. However, since Dio is overall mostly evil throughout the entirety of the series, I will not speak further about him. But another villain, like Kaas from part 2, Battle Tendency, being an all-powerful vampiric being who wished to attain superiority over Earth, he wanted such strength to be accessible, not just for himself, but for his species as well. Kaas's method and variating ideology, however, were met with disdain from his brethren, so he slaughtered all who refused to side with him, and much like an angry redditor who betrayed his peers with his illogical ideology surrounding anime opinions, he is perceived as a friend of both Wamu and ECDC. However, he seems to not really care about their deaths, as they did not involve in his plan, and as such, he follows this theme as he continues his path towards becoming the ultimate life form. Next up would be Duan Gang's Yoshikage Kira, a serial killer who only wishes to live a quiet life free of stress and worry. Seems pretty reasonable, right? But you can't really live a quiet life when you're incapable of controlling your hand fetish and you murder people on a regular basis. He seems like a regular person on the outside, blending in with people for the duration of his life. But as we all know, deep down inside, his strange hand fetish is rather dominating, controlling his regular life. And I mean, I'm not one to judge, but like, bro, control yourself. Being the Ario's main antagonist, the Italian boss Diavolo is a less avert example. About a third of the way through Golden Wind, Bruno's gang is entrusted with secured transportation of the boss's daughter, Trish Una, to Venice. Bucciarati believes that the boss's intentions are respectable and nothing out of line, evident when he assures Trish that her father only wishes for her to live a safe and happy life. But later on, he learns of Diavolo's dissolute nature when he attempts to murder Trish and further secure his already enigmatic identity, sticking to the theme of people aren't always what they appear to be. Ah oh yes, Enrico Pucci, the preliminary prison priest of precious praise, Pucci's adequate love for both God and his mentor slash boyfriend Dio is what seems to be his driving force throughout Stone Ocean. When he was first introduced, he was nothing but an ordinary priest, but sticking to the theme, we readers quickly learn that he was in fact the man behind White Snake, which caused many dangerous events, putting the cast of Stone Ocean in peril. And as he frequently stated, he wished to attain heaven creating a heaven on earth and allowing everyone to face their own destiny, creating mankind a form of salvation. If this guy went up to you and said, I'm gonna free mankind of all of its sins and bring us all closer to God, you either think that he's a crackhead or a considerate fanatic with good intentions. Most likely the former, right? Pucci, however, executes the final step of his plan, attaining his goal by reaching a singularity point and resetting the universe. And of course, next up is everyone's favorite protagonist, Funny Valentine, the 23rd president of the United States. The death of his father as an American war hero was impactful for young Valentine's life, reinforcing his beliefs in the competency of patriotism. And with the help of the Holy Corps, Valentine made his way up the federal hierarchy, eventually becoming president. His faculty to grant America's competency and power drove him forward, claiming his actions were nothing but for the country's benefit even going as far as to perform whatever he believed was necessary to aid United States growth. This opposing ideology is what made Valentine an antagonist to Johnny. However, his aptitude for patriotism, carrying out some cancel YouTuber things with a 14-year-old girl, and of course committing first-degree manslaughter on more than one occasion, along with a latter of other dirty deeds, were a direct result of the man's overindulgent patriotism. And of course, that leaves only Toru, which I strongly believe is the main antagonist in Jojolian. We might see an alternate Diego situation with Jobin, however, when Toru and his motives are brought up, we don't really know a lot about him yet, or at least of the time of making this video. 
the only thing we know is that the man possibly would want money and in turn power for the exchange of the Rokakaka food, and possibly for the continuation of his species, a little bit similar to Kaz himself. But since our perception of Toro is rather clouded in mystery, this theme of people not only speaking what they first perceived as most definitely will continue, since there's still a lot to learn about Toru. And that really covers all the villains in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I think it's rather fun to speak about themes in Jojo since they always interest me, and hopefully you will find that interesting too. And as the great Bucharati once said, Arrivederci.